So when y'all last left me with my little charger mishap we were having back there with the melting plug, I had to use a mobile charger setup because the Tesla plug on the Autel charger I was using was completely destroyed. Let me show you. I don't know if it's completely destroyed, but it's certainly crispy. The action camera won't really focus to get a close shot, but on that left prong there that's really crispy, the plastic is melted beneath it. So I'm going to say this is no longer safe to use, and that's why I haven't tried to use it. Now, here's what I have been using. I have been using my Shockflow 40 amp EVSE turned down to 32 amps, and it's been working fine for me, but I would like to go back to my permanent installation, you know? This one's supposed to live in my trunk and not be used every day. I would like to continue using my Autel here. One, because I paid a lot of money for it. This is the commercial version. It's the C50. It has a cool screen on it that shows you the charging stats. It's really made to be directly wired, but in, in my situation, I really don't want to do that because I occasionally test EVSEs because I'm a YouTube reviewer. That's just what we do. And I really need this 1450 plug out here just to have it available. So that's why I haven't directly wired this. I mean, I could. The right way to do it would be to run a completely separate line and a new breaker into my panel that just powers this specifically. The uh, wrong way to do it would be I could double tap that breaker in there, power it directly, and keep my 1450, and just remember not to use them at the same time, but that's not really the right way to do things. What I'm going to do in this situation for now is we're going to take this off, and I'm going to put another EVSE here that has a good uh, plug attached to it. I have so many... EVSEs in my closet that you know it doesn't make sense to buy another pigtail plug for this one when that's like 30 or 40 dollars when I have so many EVSEs in my closet. So we're going to change this out today and put a new EVSE in its place. So here's the setup I have. This is a completely home built situation here. This used to be a piece of railing or a flagpole, I, I don't remember, but we found it at the scrap yard and just cut it in half and welded the top closed. <laughs> the rest of this stuff is just hardware store that we cut to make use. And in the ground is a bag of fake foam concrete. You uh, buy a bag of it and you mix it together and then it forms a foam that hardens like concrete, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's my setup I have right now. So to take this off, there's some flathead screws here. And then down here, there's some kind of security screw. I hope I still have the uh, screw somewhere. So let's get this off. That's, that's loose. Now we gotta get this security screw off. And it is right here. So of course, I can't get to it the long way. I have to go the short way, make things difficult. Yes, that is the proper size. And it is not even tight. I might be able to finger it. Yeah, I can just twist it with my fingers. My security wasn't very good on this thing. <laughs> here it goes. Just lift off and pull away going to put my security screw back in the bottom of this thing before I lose it. Because this isn't going to be in the closet forever. I really want to use this one. Yeah, I just have a mess of all my wires here between the Autel and the shock flow. Oh, come on. Hush up.
we are separated. Actually, I can go ahead and put the shock flow up too because I'm done with it. So we can go ahead and put it back in. Oh, I forgot about that being in there. That's another project. We can go ahead and put the shock flow back in its little case here. I was able to remove the unit and the back plate with extreme difficulty because I have no proper tools. I have a few Harbor Freight screwdrivers and that's about it. <laughs> I got in my closet and got out one of my Tesla high powered wall connectors and you can see this one's plug is not burnt and we're going to go ahead and hook this bad boy up. Now I did find the back plate for it along with a bag of random hardware. I don't know. There's flat heads. There's Phillips heads. There's uh, whatever that is. <laughs> it's probably not the right hardware. We're going to get this thing on this pole even if I have to use duct tape to hold it on. So we got the Tesla back plate on now. I uh, just chose to do the four outside one. It's as tight as it needs to be. This pole is a little wobbly anyway. I don't know if y'all can see that. Definitely not gonna fall off and it doesn't wiggle, but it's pretty much just hand tight. That's as far as I went with it. Now let's get this wall connector attached to it. Here we go. So I want the excess cables to be kind of cocked to the right here. And they'll kind of go behind it. Oh. Well, there's how it's going to look. With the Tesla design here, there's nothing to hold it there until I get a screw to screw in over here. So I didn't think of that. <laughs> I didn't think of that. So I'm going to have to try to hold it with one hand and get a screw ready with the other hand. So, of course, I don't have a hex key out here right now. But we can tighten it with our thumb enough to just hold it there while I go figure my life out. So we got the threads in just a bit. And uh, interestingly enough, that was all the screws that are in my little baggie here. And I still got these little bottom ones. Uh-oh. So I'm missing some screws here. Now, in my case, it's not horrible because I got like five more of these in my closet. I can just go open up another one and get the screws out of it, but I would really like to know where my screws went. So this little kit that I've been using for my screwdriver happened to have a T15, a Torx 15 bit in here. Now I'm pretty sure this is a hex key, not a Torx but they're somewhat compatible as long as you don't try to over torque it it'll uh it'll tighten it down so i'm just going to use finger strength here to tighten it down so i don't strip anything yep there we go all the way tight with finger you can see it's already uh somewhat stripped probably because when i was taking it apart the first time i didn't have the proper tool All right, finger tight. So now we just got to figure out this bottom situation. You join me here pulling out a new Tesla wall connector from underneath the bed. Let's see if we can find the hardware we need here. Hmm. No, not that one. the plate well what do you know there we go all right I got what I need you can go back under the bed now okay now for the moment of truth we're gonna plug this thing in and see if it fires up now <laughs> don't feel too bad for that brand new unit that I borrowed the screwdrivers from if you remember that other Tesla plug that I was using that got burnt up, 
yeah that's where it came from too so there's no plug for that one either now so let's go ahead and get this plugged in and fire it up here it goes and the breaker is already on it is booting up and it's ready to go so now all we have to do is plug it into the car and see if it charges which I have no reason to suspect that it wouldn't Let's see if the little button works. Yep. Plug her in. Had the big click over there and she's charging. Now, one thing I am going to do since I have that low quality NEMA 1450 plug over there. Now, granted, it did last over four years, but I'm going to go ahead and tell my car to turn it down to 32 amps unless I really need it. Which it shouldn't be an issue anymore because we now have a DC fast charger in town that I can use. Charge current at this location is at 40 amps. And you can see we are charging at full power 40 amps. So we're going to go ahead and back that down to 32. So remember, that plug is supposed to be rated for 50 amps. And if you have a continuous load, it's safe to pull it at 40 amps. So it should be able to survive at 40 amps, but just to be extra safe, we're gonna back this down to 32 amp. So now you can see we're pulling eight kilowatts at 32 amps instead of high nine, almost 10 kilowatts at 40 amps. Now, since my plug is over here and the charger's over there, I just have this little stand here so I can hang my cord over. So it looks like the charger is happy. Looks like the car is happy. I'll keep monitoring all this to make sure nothing flames out again. And of course, I'll let y'all know if it does. Thanks for watching this episode and I will see y'all in the next one.